What does a contraction feel like? How do I know if I'm in labor? And what does the day of labor look like? Wait, is this normal? Hey, I'm Heidi. My best friends call me Hydes. I'm a certified birth doula, host of this podcast, and author of Birth Story, an interactive pregnancy guidebook. I have supported hundreds of women through their labor and deliveries, and I believe every one of them and you deserves a microphone and a stage. So here we are. Listen each week to get answers to these tough questions. Birth Story, where we talk about pregnancy, labor, deliveries, where we tell our stories and share our feelings. And of course, chat about our favorite baby products and motherhood. And because I'm passionate about birth outcomes, you will hear from some of the top experts in labor and delivery. Whether you are pregnant, trying desperately to get pregnant, or you just love a good birth story, I hope you will stick around and be part of this birth story family. You guys, my book is out. I mean, it is out in the world. I cannot believe it. I have been writing it for several years and it's just mind blowing. Birth Story Pregnancy Guidebook and Journal is a one of a kind discovery into your pregnancy that provides you education through storytelling. So what's it really about? In the 16 years that I have served women with every personality type, I noticed there was a huge disconnect between what my clients were craving for childbirth education in a book and the books that were actually available on the market. There seemed to be unlimited resources if you are looking for an unmedicated birth or a natural birth or a home birth. But there just weren't a lot of resources for my clients who were part of the 92% of women birthing in a hospital and very much open to medical interventions like an epidural, nitrous oxide, and opioid medications. So I wrote that book to fill the gap for you. Week by week throughout your pregnancy, you will engage with material meant to educate and empower you as you plan for your own birth story hospital, medicated, unmedicated, or something in between. You are welcomed each week with a postcard from the womb, which is an adorable note from your baby about their miraculous development, as well as the amazing changes occurring within you. Then you are invited to use an uplifting birth affirmation and to respond to an introspective journaling prompt to document your feelings, curiosities, and wonders every single week. With room to memorialize your own birth story, this book will become a memory keeper and a legacy gift for your baby. You are encouraged to read one of my favorite birth stories each week filled with childbirth education, tidbits, and explanations of important medical terms and procedures. These are real-life accounts shared with permission from the births that I've attended during my career as a doula. And I gave you a great mix. In the 42-week guide to your pregnancy and 42 birth stories, seven of them end in cesarean section. About half are unmedicated and the other half are medicated deliveries. This is a judgment-free book. So take what you need from each element and leave the rest. Okay, are you ready to buy? I would love for you to go to birthstory.com and buy it directly from me. But I totally get it if you're an Amazon girl. You can head to Amazon.com and just type in birth story pregnancy and the book should pop up. I'll deliver it straight to your doorstep. And I would venture to say that you might be an audiobook kind of woman because you're listening to a podcast. So if you would prefer to listen to this book, then I have recorded it and it is available for download at audible.com or on your Audible app. Thank you for being part of the birth story community. I am so excited for you to have this book in your hand once you've purchased it and it has arrived. I hope that you will give me your thoughts and feedback and don't forget to take a selfie with your book and post it on Instagram and tag at birth story podcast. Today's sponsor is quick zip crib sheets. And the reason is it's because it's Kristen's favorite baby product. So You've set up this beautiful, perfect nursery for your baby. 
But did anyone ever tell you that it would be almost impossible to change that crib sheet at three o'clock in the morning with a baby or two in arms that have had an accident? There is such a better way. Quick Zip is a two-piece sheet that zips on in seconds. No, really, seconds. No more lifting, pulling, wrestling to get the sheet on, or worrying about the danger of it popping off. Quick Zip, it's quick, it's easy to change, and it wraps all the way around the mattress so that it will stay on safely for baby. Quick Zip crib sheets, They've been featured in parenting and people and consumer reports like moms are talking and what they're saying is that they're lifesavers, the best invention ever in the holy grail of baby products. So don't waste one more minute, one more night struggling with a crib sheet. Try Quick Zip today and you can save 15% off your first order at quickzipsheet.com with the code birth story podcast. Quick zip products also include a 100% happiness guarantee. Who doesn't love that? So there's no risk in ordering because there's free shipping, free returns with US orders. Hey, I've got Kristen here again for part two of her um, birth stories. So we heard from Kristen about her kind of journey with the loss of a baby and then her beautiful birth story of her son that was very long, 30-hour labor. And now Kristen's back in the studio to share with us about baby number two. And this is a wild story. So welcome, Kristen. Thank you. Glad to be back again. Okay, let's talk about how you found out you were pregnant with baby number two. So honestly, it was a lot. Of course, I think with your second or third or sixth kid, um, it's just not as, I don't know, I wasn't as in tune with my body, I guess. (laughs) So was it another surprise? It wasn't a surprise, um, but it wasn't as planned. I think like we were ready, but we were just kind of like seeing what was happening without like timing or any of that kind of stuff. Missed a period, kind of new, you know, just kind of new. Took the test and it was positive. So how, um, at this point, how old was your oldest? That we just heard his just birthday. had his third birthday. Okay, so you have a three year old toddler. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, mm-hmm. very busy boy, yes. and I was working full time at this point too. So um, we had a very busy lifestyle. Yeah, took the test and actually like sat on it for the day. Um, I took it in the morning and didn't tell my husband until that night, just because I was just waiting for the right moment. And again, like with a three year old at home, like there's not there, it's chaotic. So different. To say the least. Yeah. Yeah. So I wanted to like wait until he was in bed and like I could, you know, share the news um, with him, um, just the two of us. Yeah. He was excited. He ran out and bought me flowers right away, which was very nice. Um, Yeah. Six weeks pregnant, the nausea hits. And I was nauseous with my first, but this was like another level. Um, There was definitely some vomiting, you know wanting to throw up after you've brushed your teeth you know that okay. toothbrush just makes yeah. you yeah yeah <laughs> it was rough all smells too oh my gosh and my husband was going through this like asian cooking phase <laughs> which we <laughs> love asian food love it like we'll eat almost anything but he wanted to make it at home and i was like please <laughs> stop with the fish sauce you know stop <laughs> This is awesome. <laughs> oh, man. I just can't make this stuff up. So, so yeah. So, I was super sick. If you listen to the first story, you'll know about the heartbeat thing. Well, this one we went in, and um, it was Christmas time when, like, my first appointment was coming up. And I had had some spotting. And as soon as I saw that the first time, I was like, oh, no. I, the, I can't have this happen again. So, we go in, and it was a little early. And so, they had done an ultrasound which I really don't think they like doing ultrasounds at six weeks because you may or may not see anything. Um, And so they prepared me for that, but they saw a sack, but they didn't see the fetal pole. Okay. Um, So I was still very early. Yes. Still very early. And it was Christmas and we we were, it was a year that we were going to go to his family in Pennsylvania. So I was like, great, I'm pregnant, but it's like a, Again, the ultrasound tech and the doctor were both saying, prepare yourself for 
that you may not see anything in my mind and in my Dr. Google on my iPhone sitting in the waiting room, I'm like, great, I have a blighted ovum, which is, I think your body, I think you do fertilize an egg, but it like, and your body thinks you're pregnant, but like nothing attaches or nothing grows or something. I don't know. Um, An empty sack. So basically I I was like, great, I'm going to miscarry again. Um, and I have to go see 35 people in our family and I'm sick as a dog. You know, I can barely function. I'm so sick. Um, so it was, we wanted to cancel our plans, but we didn't. Um, we just knew that we would be going back to the doctor after Christmas, after New Year's and know for sure what was happening. So that was hard. Uh, it was, um, we had another pregnancy announcement in the family over the holiday. And so that was kind of like a punch to the gut. Um, you that know, that makes me hurt I was like, for you. I was like, I'm pregnant too, but. I was in such a dark place. It was like, it's not going to be anything. I'm going to miss here again. And it was hard. Um, So we made it through. Um, We ended up telling some people because I was just, I couldn't function. I couldn't socialize. I couldn't do anything. Um, I just felt so sick. And so it was kind of, I think, obvious. Yeah. (laughs) I was expecting. Um, At any point, did you think like me being this sick is a good thing? Yes. Okay. Yeah, some people told me that, and I brushed it off at the time. Yeah, you know, but I knew that as long as I was still so sick that I was still pregnant, and yeah. you know, and I, and I did know. I mean, I wasn't totally off my rocker. Like I knew that it was a little early for that ultrasound, so there was hope. There was still hope. So we went back after the new year, and good heartbeat. There's the baby. Everything's fine. Thank Yay. God. Yeah. So celebration um, for New Year. Yeah. So we've got a due date and all of this stuff. Um, and so I was just super ill for the first, this lasted longer, 22 weeks, I think, like okay. head in the toilet. And I did take Zofran mm-hmm. for nausea, but I didn't, and for vomiting, I, cause I wasn't like, um, vomiting all the time. It was just occasionally, but I was feeling so nauseous. Um, but I didn't realize that Zofran makes everything stop. So like constipation oh okay i was like where is she going so with bad oh yeah i think it just stops your whole digestive system or something i don't know well and, and i'm i know that's like a pregnancy symptom i think also but it exacerbates it yeah or can exacerbate it and so that made me feel more sick because i was like i can't did the go. zofran take away the nausea no no okay it didn't work the only and i i, I started to learn about sour things. So like I lived at Chick-fil-A getting like giant lemonades Mm -hmm. from Chick-fil-A. There's also like this iced passion tea at Starbucks that is kind of sour and it's so good. And I drink it anyways. Okay. And so I like lived on that stuff. I'll put all that in the show notes because I don't, I I don't know what that tea is, but I want to know. It was very good. Yeah. (laughs) Um, And it's on, you have to get the unsweetened. So it's that sour because when you're so sick like that, it it helps. Um, And then um, I learned to eat just push through and just eat. Yeah. Uh, I ate a lot of Greek yogurt for the protein and the fat, the yep. full fat yogurt. Um, I ate a lot of chicken nuggets from Chick-fil-A. Girl, whatever you can get in. <laughs> I ate a lot of um, those bacon, egg and cheese sandwiches from Laurel, Laurel Market. And I, you know, I was like, I don't care how much weight I gain. I just need to not feel sick. And so I learned that if when I had protein and fat in my stomach, it helped. Okay. Um, so I learned to manage it. I, I learned to live through that nausea, um, which at times was very difficult, but I did. 22 weeks About, is a really long time. Uh, man, it just... So you never got diagnosed with any kind of condition? No, it wasn't like I had whatever that Kate Middleton has. Hyperamnesis. That's the only person that I know of. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Amy Schumer right now. Oh, no. On Instagram. She's hysterical oh, no. talking about it. Yeah. it's <laughs> I can't even imagine. I mean, it's not hysterical, but her posts are hysterical. I don't know how it. she had. I don't know how that Kate Middleton has had three kids. Yeah. More power to her. So um, 22 weeks and the nausea. 23 weeks start the pubis symphysis dysfunction. Okay. Go on. <laughs> Please enlighten us. All of a sudden I get this literal pain in the crotch that just kills. So some of my clients have described it as a lightning bolt. Yeah. Would you describe it that way? It just feel it on it just feels like 
a broken bone. I yep. don't know. It was awful. I couldn't so walk. sore. I couldn't sit, and I was had a desk. Job. I'm an accountant, so like I had yeah. a desk job. Um, can't walk though, and like I mean, with my first pregnancy, I was walking miles every day up until the day I delivered, and so. You know, and at this point, I have a three-year-old. Um, so I sit at a desk all day, just sitting hurts. And then I chase my kid around, you know, before and after that. Um, and so it was – and we have a dog, you know. So I just – and I've got a house to manage. And, I've, you know, you just have stuff to do and you can't just sit around. And there were nights where I was crawling up the stairs to tuck my kid into bed um, because I was in so much pain. What did your doctor say about it? He said, there's nothing you can do. Um the only thing you can do is deliver. Okay. Um, and I, I also went to the chi- a chiropractor. Um, I, I really believe in chiropractic, whether you're pregnant or not. I think all of those adjustments got things in perfect alignment. Yes. <laughs> Plus that SPD. Yeah. Basically, my doctor said that the gate is opening before it needs to. So I think basically like your pelvis opens up a little bit. Yep. Is that right? Mm-hmm. Um, Yep, so especially with that relaxin, that hormone relaxin. Okay, the bones just kind of shift yep. a little. Uh huh. Especially on baby number two. The doctor said the gate is opening before you know you're in labor, and you know as soon as you have this baby, probably two weeks after, you'll feel totally back to normal. Okay. Because it, you know, you get to the point. I'm never going to walk again. I'm never mm-hmm. going to feel better again. Or you feel like you actually are going to break your pelvis. <laughs> it felt like it was broken. Yeah. I mean, it really did. I've never broken my pelvis actually, but I imagine it's pretty close. Um, so that was difficult. Um, so it was a more physically challenging pregnancy other than that, the nausea and the SPD though. I, that's my only complaints, uh, with it. And I was huge also. Those are two big complaints. So how much weight did you gain? Uh, I gained 40 pounds with each pregnancy. Um, but with my second, I started heavier than I did, you know, with my first, Mm -hmm. um, only about seven pounds heavier. I mean, the scale was up there yeah. then I, by the time I delivered my second and I was really uncomfortable. Yeah. You know, but I'm, I mean, your body is going to gain or not gain whatever it needs. I joke that I was like, I think most women have like a delivery weight that they like deliver at. <laughs> yes. So I delivered both of my babies at the exact same weight. Like the oh, day I went to the hospital, I was like X number of pounds. Yeah. That was like horrible. But if it makes you feel better, I gained 70 pounds. Oh my gosh. <laughs> with both of my pregnancies. And for anyone listening, don't do that. So Yeah, but I, I really think that your that everyone's body, whether you eat a green vegan smoothie every day or whether you eat Chick-fil-A like I did, it's gonna hold on to as much as it needs. Yeah. You know, to create a new life. And I it's yeah. It's just amazing. Um, and when you add up all the things too of like I mean, just the placenta can weigh up to five pounds. Wow! With all right. of the with all the blood volume and stuff. Right. But then a couple of pounds for the amniotic fluid. A cu- you know, the baby can be. Right. I mean, up to a lot of pounds. Right. So. Yeah. So I was really uncomfortable at the end, especially with the SPD and then all the pressure and stuff. Um, so did you get checked at the end, like around like thirty eight? Weeks. Yes. Did you do an internal check? Oh, yeah. Okay. And I was just like one or two centimeters. Okay. And that was with my first two. Just yep. nothing uh, significant. Um, this was a summer baby, though. Uh, Georgie was born in August. Okay. So it was so hot. Okay. <laughs> and I was swollen. and But I got to go to the pool a lot, too. And the splash pads. Oh, man. So, so I yes. strapped on that maternity bathing suit and rocked it in, with the cellulite and everything. And just... Go, girl. Did not care. Yes. Yeah. And we shouldn't care. No, shouldn't care. So. And everyone was, I mean, everyone that I would see, you know, like, was very supportive. Yeah. Was you know? like, let me rub your feet yeah. while your kid's, like, playing yeah. in the pool. Yeah. So that was nice. Um, let me just say, okay. too, when you're pregnant in the summer and you get in the pool, oh, doesn't it feel so good? The best. And the pool we go to is kept very cold to the point that it's, like, too cold, even when it's 100 degrees outside. Yeah. But last summer, it was perfect. Felt so good. Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. Um, so tell me, so how was the end then? So those like that week leading up to um, your labor and delivery. So um, it's interesting. I had my kids on the same gestational day. Okay. Um, so I was 39 weeks and four days. Okay. Five days. Whatever. 
because you had such a long labor on your first, it's hard to. Yeah, I went into labor on the third, on 39.3 with the first and had him on the fifth, but um, I went until, so I think this was about the same day. 39.5. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, Woke up in the middle of the night with timeable contractions. Okay. And I was so ready. Um, I had gone to the chiropractor. I had sat on that ball. I had, I couldn't barely move, but I was trying to walk the stairs and just get things, you know, going. Um, I, I have this little bunko group in Charlotte and, um, everyone was telling me to have sex, to get labor going. Um, and I went home from bunko that night and I was like, honey, we have to do it. And we both said, we chickened out. We couldn't do it. It was just (laughs) too pregnant, you know, um, too pregnant and also too tired. Yeah. And so I was like, I will do, but both of us were so desperate just to get this baby out because I was so uncomfortable, but we just couldn't bring ourselves to do it. So anyways, we tried some stuff, but you know, I, I don't know. So I woke up in the middle of the night and I had timeable contractions and I was so excited. Um, so I just went upstairs to our guest room, um, to rest. So I didn't bother my husband. Um, and, Next thing I knew, it was like five o'clock in the morning and I had fallen asleep and the contractions were gone. So, um, and so this went on for two days. Okay. So I I don't know if it's called false labor or prodromal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, so, I mean, they were painful. I had to stop. I had to breathe. It wasn't, it was more than a Braxton Hicks contraction. Um, and so this, they would happen for a couple hours and then they would stop and then they would come back and stop. Um, and I was miserable, um, and the anticipation of it, you know, every time one of those contractions hits, oh yes, this is it. And then an hour later they're gone. Oh my gosh, this baby is never going to come. Yeah. <laughs> I think what they don't tell you too, is that it is labor. It's just a different type of labor. Yeah. You know, so it is very common to have a prodromal labor mm-hmm. where it does start and stop and you actually are making a lot of progress. Yeah. So I think what we're going to get to is we're going to, I'm going to hear a story from you where you were making a lot of progress during those starting yes. and stopping. Periods. Yeah. So it ended up being, uh, uh, you know, productive. Um, but the next day, um, let's see, we had gone to the pool. Um, I did my jumping jacks underwater to try to get that head mm-hmm. down, um, try to get that cervix, you know, opening. Um, the next day I went to the chiropractor and got, uh, acupuncture, mm-hmm. you know, in all these little spots. Um, I also drank castor oil at the urging of a friend yep. that it really scared me to do, but I was so desperate. I had to, I had to have this baby. Yep. So in one day I had done my jumping jacks in the pool had the acupuncture and another adjustment for that SPD and taken the castor oil. I hope you only took one dose of castor oil. It was one tablespoon with like a huge glass of orange juice. Um, Ooh, orange juice. I've never heard anybody mix it with that. So I had uh, one tablespoon in the Talenti double chocolate fudge ice cream or something. No. Can't eat it anymore. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, never. Yeah. So So I chugged mine down. Um, and I was so scared about the um, side effects of it, but again, so desperate. I was just done. So this was kind of like the perfect storm here. So I had the the acupuncture in the morning. I came home and did the the castor oil. It was about noon. Um, I hadn't had a ton to eat that day, so I was okay taking the castor oil, knowing that there wouldn't be a lot coming yeah. out. Probably. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, TMI. Um, so I'm sitting there. My son is in daycare. Okay. So he's at school, we call it. Um, my husband's at work, and um, I'm sitting on the couch. It's about 2 in the afternoon. And I call my mom, and I'm like, hey, do you want to get a pedicure? Like, we got to get things moving along, and I'm also going crazy sitting here. You know, all my projects are done. I'm ready to have this baby. Um, she's like, yeah, sure. Let me call you back in an hour. Calls me at 3, and I had, like, sat down on the couch and had Netflix on, and I was like, you know, she's like, Hey, I'm ready to go. Do you want to go? And I said, you know what? I'm, I'm just, I changed my mind. I'm, I'm here. I'm comfortable. I'm just going to stay home. Um, for now we'll see what happens. So around four, my husband calls and you know, who's going to pick, who's going to pick up our son from daycare. Um, and I just said, honey, I can't do it today. I, I really need you to do it. Um, um, I'm going to go ahead and order the inducer. From Hawthorne's yes, Pizza. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, this 
pregnancy really centers around food, I think. In Charlotte. Like, we just have so many, like, staples of people's pregnancy. Yeah. So, so husband went to get son. I go, um, I think about getting the inducer, and husband calls again. It's, like, 445. As I'm, like, reaching for the phone to answer it and also call the pizza place, I felt a pop, and I felt a gush. Um, and I, it was my husband calling and before I could say anything, I said, my water broke. Hey, it's Heidi. I'm interrupting the podcast to let you know about a free resource that I've created for you at birthstory.com. All you have to do is go to birthstory.com and then click the tab that says the workbook. Once you put your email address in, an entire resource library of all of my secret sauces are available to you for free as my thank you for listening to the Birth Story podcast and being part of this community. At birthstory.com, under the workbook, you will find a birth plan template, articles on circumcision, delayed cord clamping, flipping a breech baby, packing your hospital bag, acupressure points, placenta encapsulation, and so much more. There are over 20 free articles ready for you to download at birthstory.com. Now let's get back to this amazing episode. They hustle home. Woo. Yeah. Um, and so I ran to the bathroom because I was in our living room. I ran to the bathroom um, and more water came out, like a lot it was not a trickle. It was a complete, like the first, with my first labor, like they broke my water, but then my water actually like came out like an hour later. It was like that. It was like. This was like all of your amniotic fluid was yes, gone. Yes. Okay. Um, so it was very obvious um, in my case that my water had broken. And so he had come home. As soon as that water broke, cave woman noises coming out of my body. Like you were in full on transition. Like yeah. Skip, skip labor. Like deep voice. Like, can't speak. I called my mom because she was on call to watch our son. Um, And the plan was that she was going to be with us again at the hospital. So she was going to take my son to their house, you know, get him fed, get him to bed, and then come to the hospital. So I called her, and she was at a point um, that she was able to come right over. and so it was kind of like the perfect little storm here. And so I'm making cave woman sounds. My husband and my son walk in and my husband is like, stop with the sounds. Because he never even saw that with your first, right? Right. Because right about when you got to that transition point was when you got the epidural with baby yeah. number one. Yes. So this was new for you and for your husband. Yes. And yeah. so he's like, you're like, are scaring. You're scaring our, our, our three-year-old, you know, which I understand. So I tried to like perk up a little bit. And I couldn't. Um, So at this point, like, I had all of the um, postpartum supplies ready, like, including, like, the adult diapers. So I had, like, put on an adult diaper to catch any additional fluid that might come out. Um, So I am, like, a hot mess. I I had showered that day, but I hadn't put on any makeup. I don't even think I, like, had blow-dried my hair, so it was just kind of, like, crazy. Um, And it didn't matter, though. At this point, it didn't matter. With my first, I was like showering and blow drying and putting on makeup during labor. This was like, I didn't know what day it was. I didn't know my name. Yeah. So you were like in very active labor in transition. Right away. The beginning. And it was very scary. It caught me off guard. It caught everybody off guard, I think. So my mom came over, got our son. As soon as my mom was there, we were in the car and gone. So it was... You know, I don't even know if we called the hospital. I guess we called the doctor on the way. I, it, it's very, very blurry. Um, so we – any other questions before I go on? No. <laughs> okay, I'm just, just like, going. Okay. I mean, I'm just sitting here with like <laughs> bated breath. I'm like, oh, no. This is what I'm thinking right now. Did she make it to the hospital? So if I can't wait to hear the rest of this. all these little things have, had not come into place as they did, um, I would have had the baby at home or in the car. Um, no doubt. So 4.45, the water broke. By 5.15, we're on the way to the hospital. Of course, it's rush hour. We get there. Um, we go up to the floor. Oh, I had I had the, my adult diaper on, and I also brought a towel with me. And by the time – and the whole ride, 
on the way there, I can like barely sit. My first labor, like very capable in the car, no problem. This one was like, I can't sit down. And you realize that you can't sit down because that's the baby's head right, right there. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so, but but like I couldn't let myself go there, yeah. you know. And so I, I was very fearful this time. Um, the whole time I'm I'm making these sounds, and my husband's like laughing at me because he's like, Kristen, you've done this before, you know, it's fine. No. And I said, no, this is different. And I, you know, I said, oh my god, what if I can't get the drugs? What if I can't get the drugs? <laughs> you know, I can't do this. Um, and I knew from those classes that the I can't do this, um, I felt so nauseous. Like the towel, I was like kind of like gagging into the towel and I wanted to throw up. And I was like, oh, my God, this is transition right now. Like I went from zero to 60 yeah. in minutes. And from our first interview, you were very scared about the ring of fire. That was like your <laughs> one thing that you were scared of. Yes. So, um, So we get to the hospital and I'm like contemplating like, my first, again, first labor, took a picture in front of the mother's in labor sign with a smile, you know, yeah. with makeup on. This time I'm like trying to throw up into a trash can outside of the hospital, you know, and not even caring <laughs> who's around. Uh, so we get to the elevator and like I'm like moaning and cave woman noises and like holding onto the bar in the elevator. And there's another guy in the ele- elevator with us. And my husband and the guy, I think, just like looked at each other and like shrugged, right. laughed like whoa yeah (laughs) this is real so we get to the nurse's station of the hospital and i'm like leaned over can't speak my husband has to speak for me and you know they the nurses like they like took their sweet time and i understand their skepticism i guess but i don't know this was very different. I would think that if they were hearing, sorry, I would think if they were hearing those guttural noises, like that they would know, you know, that it is go time. Like there's no triage. Yeah. Like, why are yeah. we in triage? Well, they did take me straight into a room. Oh, they did. Okay. Yes. But they, um, you know, I, I, you know, I was like, this is my second. Are you know, are you sure it's your water, honey? I said, yes. <laughs> I have filled up like four diapers. <laughs> <laughs> So they take me into their room. They get, they help me get undressed. They test the fluid. Yes, that's the fluid. Um, you know, they get the IV going, and I'm I'm uh, can't sit down on the bed. So I have to do like everything. I'm like standing up, and I'm like, I want the birth ball. I want the bed up high so I can lean on it. Like I was, you know, yeah, navigating everything. Like do this now for me. And they're like, Whoa, this girl's coming in hot. You know, have they had at bossy. this point have they checked your cervix? No. Okay. So they they get the you know I'm like let's get the labs going for the for the drugs. Because um, <laughs> at this point you're like I have to have the drugs. I'm not messing and, with this. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so they finally check me and she's like, Oh, honey, you're a four. What? And it was like mind blown. You know that emoji that it's like the head exploding. I was like, there's no way. Right now I'm thinking like, is this the first time you've ever checked a cervix? Because I think that you I got it wrong. I wonder still to this day. <laughs> Because nobody checked me again um, at that time. And so I wonder if it was wrong or if, I don't know. You, you've you seen much more of Well, I have births. seen women go from 4 to 10 in two contractions. Yeah. So it is possible. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, I've got to go to the bathroom, if you know what I mean. Like, so I'm, yeah. I'm moving from the toilet. I'm moving to the birth ball. I can't even sit on the ball anymore. And that really helped me with my first labor. So I, I was like, this is so different. So yeah. different. That baby was so low. Yeah. Finally, the room kind of clears out. They get us all set up. You know, I've got the things on. We get to the hospital about 5.45. Um, and this is about 6, 6.15. My husband's over there, like, filling out paperwork. And I'm, like, snapping at him. Like, hey, you, paperwork, pen down. I need you. Need you right now. Yeah. Like, do the hip thing. Like, squeeze my hips around yeah, my back, this hold is, my hand. I want you close to me. Yeah. I don't want to be alone right now. Yeah. Um, and um, so he's like, okay. So then the contraction would pass and he would go back to it. And I'd be like, hey, no, do not leave my side. I need you. And this was five or 10 minutes worth yeah. of time. Finally, I'm like, I need help. I need help. I need help. Someone help me. And he's like, should I get a nurse? <laughs> I said, yes. So at this point, they haven't given you any medicine. No, they so said, still- well, they took the blood because they have to take the labs to see platelets or mm-hmm. something. Um, so it does take time. And I understand that. <laughs> but I had made it very known, like, 
let's do this as fast as possible because I can't deal with this. And so um, he goes to get the nurse. This is 620. Okay. Water broke at home. 445. 445. Okay. Nurse comes in and she's like finger wagging in my face. Like, you need to calm down. This is, you're only four centimeters, you know, whatever. As soon as she walks in the room that second time, I was like, my, I'm sure my face changed. Like, you know that, the look, <laughs> this makes me laugh so hard. This is so TMI. <laughs> can't believe I'm sharing this. You know the look that a toddler gets when they're going number two in their diaper? Yes. <laughs> yes. My face yes. made that uh, face. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I think she definitely saw that in my face. Like that you were pushing. I was bearing down. Yeah. It felt like a bowling ball was coming through. Um, but I will say it didn't hurt. It was just massive amount of pressure and weight. It felt like Mm -hmm. it literally felt like a bowling ball was coming out, um, coming through. Like if you had to poop. Yeah. Really. And you were pushing with it. I couldn't help it. Yeah. Total. I think you said the the ejection ejection reflex. reflex. Yeah. It's exactly totally instinct. You have no control over it at all. Yeah. And I was standing up. Um, and so it's a joke sometimes when they say stop pushing and you're like, um, it's a natural it's reflex. Just coming. <laughs> Maybe it's coming. I couldn't stop it if I, my life depended on it, you know? Um, so she saw the look on my face and she goes, get on the bed right now. And I said, I cannot move. I cannot, I don't want to lay, I don't want to sit. And I also cannot move. <laughs> like I'm, I'm frozen. Yeah. Um, so the nurse said, I need to check you because if this is the baby, I need help. You know, I need to know. I need to let the powers that be know. And it's like 630. It's almost shift change, right, for the nurses. So I'm sure they just loved me. Right. <laughs> so um, I get on the bed and she checks me and, yep, this is it. And, like, this is a baby. And this this is happening, you know. And so I had So this, you went from four, maybe, to ten in 45 minutes. Yeah. 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 Um, and... Were you, was there a moment where you were like, but no, they haven't put that epidural in, or were you just not thinking about anything? At that point, point, when I felt that ejection reflex bowling ball sensation, I knew, Mm -hmm. and I had already like mentally accepted that I was going to do it without. Yeah. Um, I, from taking these classes and from doing all this reading and listening to birth stories and that kind of thing, like I knew it would be okay. At this, at that point, once I knew what was happening, I was okay. Yeah. Um, I kind of like went into myself as they, people say, but that really did happen. Mm-hmm. Um, I remember kind of like laying on the back on the bed and like, um, I did say, I don't want to lay. I want to get on hands and knees or I want to stand. And they wouldn't let me. And I think that a doula or someone else who had been there maybe to advocate a little more would have fought for that a little harder, but I didn't have it in me. At you know, that moment. To yeah. Fight. To I do think it. That's a really important part. I actually had a delivery last week um, where we arrived at the hospital complete, ready to push. And the first thing they said was, get in the bed. Mm-hmm. And we were like, hell no. no. She's going to squat this baby out on the floor. <laughs> I can. And now I totally understand that that <laughs> so. would be so much better. Yeah. Um, but again, I didn't have it in me to fight. So I just like sat on the bed and they get it all broken down and whatever. And the doctor comes in. And I had a great doctor. Um, a woman who had kids. And so that helped me too. Um, But at this point I had gone into myself, the contractions had stopped. So there really wasn't a lot of pain. Um, I, and you know, and that is so normal. And I think that people don't realize, like, especially if they have inductions and like, it's a contraction pattern, Mm -hmm. but when you have a natural childbirth, you have very long periods without any contractions at all. Mm-hmm. It's like your body gives you this natural rest period mm-hmm. right before it's go time again. Yeah. So you are kind of experiencing that. In the yeah, bed. it was like amazing. This natural, like long, just kind of rest time. Yeah. And I remember, happening. I remember laying back on the bed and like my eyes were closed and I was like, like in me- total like meditation almost, you know. Yeah. Um, and so I knew what was going to have to happen and. The doctor promised me two contractions and this baby's out, you know, yeah, five minutes and you're done and you're through and don't even worry about it. Like the only way out is through, but you can totally do this and it's going to be over fast. 
And I was like, you're lying, you're all lying. Yeah. <laughs> and then I came back to myself and said, you're all lying and it's yeah. going to take forever and I'm going to push for two hours and all this stuff. And they said, no, you're really not because the baby is right there. Yeah. Um, and so. The next contraction hits. Can you feel it building? Yeah. Um, it, uh, it was foggy. <laughs> the memory is foggy, but um, it was, they, I guess I did have a contraction and they made me push they had me push, I guess. Um, but then they did what they didn't let me stop pushing. Okay. You know, yeah. God, I needed you, Heidi. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I needed somebody there. Um, well, I'm going to guess right now. So on that contraction, did you push, keep pushing and push the baby out? I pushed out the head. Yes. Okay. Yeah. There's probably a reason why they said okay. that. Okay. Um, so if the monitor was on, um, I don't know. You may get to this in a minute if the cord was wrapped or anything no, like that. No, not that I know of. So, um, but if they tell you to keep pushing, keep pushing, keep pushing, okay. it's because they're going to fully deliver the head and then we're going to take a break and then they're probably going to deliver the shoulder and the rest of the baby okay. on the next contraction. Okay. But we don't want to get that head compressed. I see. Just kind of stuck in the middle. So I I'm going to kind of guess for your doctor because okay. I'm not your doctor, yeah. but I'm going to kind of guess that they were just saying like, um, you know, try get the head all the way through, mm -hmm. then you'll have a break. And then on the next push or contraction, they'll get the shoulder and the rest yep. of the baby out. That's exactly so. what happened. And so the head was born and I never felt the ring of fire. Yay. I know. See? Okay. okay I'm nothing so glad. to be afraid of. Thank you. And I tore Shout and I didn't that even to feel our it. Listeners, yes. You know, and I had a second degree tear and I didn't feel that either. Yeah. Um, so you natural, when you have a natural childbirth, you naturally kind of go numb because of like bearing down all the blood and all the I pressure. I believe it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yep. that's exactly um, what I experienced. Um, so yeah. So you had two really amazing births. Yeah. One thank you. long and, you know, medicated, but you made really good choices for your body, like at all the right times. And then this really like they call it precipitous if it's less than four hours. So a really fast precipitous birth, you know, from an abrupt water break and still like a beautiful birth. Yes, it was it was wonderful. Yep. Yay. Both. So yeah. special. So. so on this one, did your husband get to cut the cord again? He did. And we also didn't know what we were having. And he was convinced it was a girl. And so when a boy came out, he goes, oh, my God, it's another boy. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I love it. So it's two so, boys. Yes. You have my heart. So fun. That's just like me. It's so amazing. Fun. Yep. Well, Kristen, thank you so much for being on the podcast thank again. Thank you, Heidi. So for two different episodes, because you have such different birth stories, there's so much education for um, moms that are listening to learn from you. So thank you for Good. being on. And then I asked you on the last episode about your favorite baby product, which was this awesome like zipper sheet. So for your second baby, did you have a different baby product that was kind of your favorite that you could think of? Still love the sheets. I did a lot more baby wearing the second time around. Okay. Um, yeah. So I had all kinds of different gadgets for the baby wearing, but big deal on the second kid. All right. Well, thank you so much for being on again. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Take care. Thanks to QuickZip Crib Sheets for sponsoring today's episode and for being Kristen and so many moms' favorite baby product. QuickZip offers great starter packs, perfect for setting up your nursery or to give as the best baby shower gift in the pile. The packs include one base that stays on the mattress and up to three zip-on sheets, so you'll have a couple ready to go for a quick change. Some packs also include waterproof mattress pads that are flat, with no skirt, and designed to work with the quick zip system. Also great news is that you can buy additional zip-on sheets whenever you need an extra, or you just want to freshen up the look for a new season. Quick zip sheets are great quality and durable, and they even last kid to kid. So just a reminder, you can head over today to save 15% at quickzipsheet.com and use code BIRTHSTORYPODCAST. And there is that 100% happiness guarantee. Thank you for listening to Birth Story. My goal is you will walk away from each episode with a clear picture of how labor and delivery might go, and that you will feel empowered by the end of your pregnancy to speak up 
plan and prepare for the birth you want, no matter what that looks like.